So, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 came out, huh? You could say that I've been playing it quite a lot. Maybe just a, a small bit. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about the game. And you've probably already seen the title and the thumbnail, so you know what I'm going to talk about. I think Space Marine 2's a little undercooked. But to tell you why I think that way, let's go a little over Space Marine 1 and everything that's happened since that game has come out. So the original Space Marine, right, uh, came out in 2011. Or Hammer 40k was kind of a different beast back then, because there's been an extra decade of lore compounded on top of everything that has changed a lot of status quos compared to what happened before. The game of Space Marine takes place in a fairly isolated incident. Sure, there are mentions to the greater Warhammer lore, but you don't really see much of it. You, for the most part, you see, like, a few Space Marines chilling out and helping you. You see some of the Cadian Guard, you see some aliens and some chaos, but nothing's really expanded upon at all. It's a game that really relishes in keeping a mystery about things. Like, seriously, there's no time to breathe, and this all takes place within, like, a day or two in lore? It's just a bunch of blue guys. The story is in incredibly basic. And the game plays alright. The glory kill system's okay. The main issue with it is that you don't get invulnerability when you do a glory kill, so you actually lose more health than you gain when you actually use it. But overall, the game's pretty serviceable for 2011 standards. You got like a six-hour campaign, you got a multiplayer mode with leveling, and then you got a horde-based mode. We can go through levels and level up that way too. But for the most part, I would say that the original Space Marine game's like a 7 out of 10. I don't think it reaches the heights of other games that came out around that time, like Halo Reach or Call of Duty or Gears of War. But there's no doubt in my mind that the game served as a nice introduction to 40k for a lot of people. And when the game came out and everything was finished with its development in DLC, more content for Space Marine didn't come out for more than a decade. Until we got the reveal trailer for Space Marine 2, two years before the full game would come out. And for the amount of development time that was supposedly put into this game, I feel like it was still very rushed. When it comes to modern games and how much is in them, Space Marine feels more like Dark Tide than Baldur's Gate. And maybe that's not fair. But I feel like a big issue with what Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2 is is that it's not all out yet at release. It's very much so going to be a live service game, and it's missing stuff that you would think would be industry standards, but aren't. Sure, you got three game modes like the last game, but there's no real horde mode where you could just hunker down with some homies and kill a bunch of nids or thousand sons or chaos worshippers or something like that. The thousand sons are also underwhelming. There's not a lot of enemy variety for them, and the Zangors and Rubric Marines are kind of really boring compared to the Tyranids. Because now you're fighting against a threat that doesn't want to run at you, and most of the technology used to make the Horde system in this game are made for these giant swarms, and now you just have Zangors that run at you with shields. It's not as fun, it, it alters the style of the game, and the Tyranids have some problems. I feel like the Gargoyles are underused and underutilized. They're pretty much only there to be an objective for you to shoot off of something while they're damaging it and never actually serve any gameplay purpose which is so sad because they look so cool in the game how they swarm could you imagine if you just had a few gargoyles in every combat encounter and maybe that's just me being a little sore on the overall enemy variety but there's a segment that's a cutscene that's about two minutes long that shows up near the end of the game where it is you and the characters you play as going through a swarm of gargoyles. And all I could think about during this cutscene was... Spoilers ahead, by the way. Man, I really wish I wasn't watching this because I bought a video game. I bought a video game where I wanted to experience these battles. I wanted to be a space marine and I just wasn't allowed to. Probably because the game was rushed at some point. The against of the gargoyles were never going to be used in actual combat. Which is a real shame. Because certain parts of the game have this authenticity and, and steam to them. There's these true moments of awe that happen in the campaign and even in the co-op missions where you're like, Wow, I can't believe they were able to do this. 
And other times it's just fancy smoke and mirrors or cutscenes, which make it so sad. There's not enough happening with A Thousand Suns. Seriously, if you look at stuff like the executions you can do on the Terminators, and how baby small their enemy variety is compared to the Tyranids, show that the Thousand Suns weren't the main draw of this game at all. Like, it's weird that you can't even use a Thousand Suns skin in the multiplayer of the game, because they were so heavily, heavily advertised for the game. There's not a lot of fun wacky stuff in the game with the whole Zinch corruption either. I can think of three things they did, and they were kind of boring. You know, you got the, oh, your screen wigs out if you get hit by Rubik Marines too much, and oh, wait, that's Captain Titus, and then, oh, wait, those are Ultramarines, and then, you know, the end of the game, if you even want to call that a trick. I wish there was something really cool they would have done with Zinch, like a fourth wall breaking of, like, hey, you're in a game, like, sending us back to a tutorial and think we have to restart the entire game, which would have been awesome. Or maybe make us think we're playing Space Marine 1, who knows. Even though now everything in the game is better, way better, than everything in Space Marine 1, except for not having orcs, the combat's better, the visuals are popping and they really fit the current 40k attitude. There's so many Space Marines that you just get to be around and be on a battle barge, while having nice, fast, intuitive combat, as well as some other modes that are really fun to play. With there still being a class-based system much like the first game for multiplayer, but now there are six classes instead of three that allow for a lot of different playstyles, which is really cool. I think the campaign kind of hit it out of the ballpark, at least for me as a 40k fan. Seriously, it is kind of an old-school COD campaign, but I think we can all say that we miss old-school COD campaigns. It's just you, a couple of dudes, some sort of personal vendetta to add it on top of the whole military thing, and really cool action set pieces that are kind of tied together by a story at some point, somewhere. But I feel like all these characters actually have pretty sound motivation, at least the main ones. Well, everyone else is just kind of there because it's their job. I feel like there's a lot of fun back and forth in the writing with the characters in the campaign and the stuff you can hear around the battle barge and just some of the speeches are amazing and bleed 40k. The issue is that the game, as I said, does breathe 40k though. Amazingly, it breathes 40k. It has things like, I can't believe those idiots dropped the flag, let's go get the flag, let's pick up the flag and have this final stand because we need the flag, calling back to some of the most influential 40k art. I think they did a really good job showing the scale of 40k in this game too, which you didn't really see a lot of in Space Marine, with how enormous and how many people are in these battles, which are really because of tech limitations at the time. But it's amazingly done with the battle barge and how many space marines are everywhere. The Imperial Guard are amazing in this game. It makes you always want to root for the little dudes. But that being said, I really, really like Space Marine because I know there's flaws in it, but I can't stop playing it. I think personally the game's like an 8 out of 10. Better than the first Space Marine, but still missing some stuff. But if you're really clamoring to get your hands on this game, I don't think it will disappoint you. What do you guys think of Space Marine 2 in general? Uh, I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you like this video and want to see more like it, definitely more stuff about Space Marines in the coming future and this game, make sure to subscribe. Till next video, fellas!